Over in England and Ireland, it was called the Penny Catechism. And it was the same uh, uh, catechism, but using the real English language. <laughs> but you remember that, the uh, first question, who made you? Why did God make you? taught by the nuns? Oh. Okay, how many of you were in trouble with the nuns? <laughs> there we go, there's a litmus test now, of, uh, you're, you're paying attention. God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him, so I could be happy in this world and forever happy with him rather than him. There's a beautiful knowledge in that. You know, prior to the Second Vatican Council, we taught the truths of faith so well. And I'm going to say one of the struggles since the Second Vatican Council, people went from a pure objective approach to the faith to purely a subjective approach to the faith. But in order to have a successful approach to the faith, you need both. You need to consider objectively the truths of God and the truths of his church. But in order for that to change our life, we've got to have a personal experience with God. And we've got to have an experience of God in the midst of the community of the church that we call the body of Christ, the mystical body. To know, to love, and to serve is how faith comes alive. You know, there's a story of a man that's had some troubles with the church, but it's Anthony de Mello. And he tells the story of the recent convert. And it's a beautiful story. The recent convert goes to his atheist friend and he says, uh, he said, you know, I've found faith. My life is so different. He said, what faith? The Christian faith. Well, tell me more about your Christ then. He said, well, what are you asking? He said, well, where was he born? He said, back then. How many uh, parables did he teach? And he said, I don't know. He said, well, how many miracles did he perform? I don't know. He said, you know very little about this Christ for which you would change your life. And he said, this I know much about him. I was a drunk. I lost my wife. I lost my family. I lost my job. I lost my experience living in my, my local community. And now I found myself in the gutter. And one man bringing food to me as a homeless person read a line of scripture and it changed me. This much I know. I'm out of the gutter. I'm off the drink. I'm reconciling with my family. And that's all I need to know. Beautiful, beautiful story because it is that initial experience of Jesus that asks us to go beyond ourselves then once we have that encounter and then to know more objectively about Christ. And so that woman at the well, it's a beautiful story. Here she is, she's an outsider. She's going to the well and she discovers Jesus there. He asked her, give me a drink. And then he gets into the nitty gritty of her life. You know, she says, you know, I'm not married. He's like, sure to hell not married. You've been married five times, have you? <laughs> and there was a divine knowing of the woman and her experience. Christ knew her. He told her her own story. And she listened. She realized she was in the presence of somebody that was special talked about that life-giving water. There's a lot that's not put in that story. There's a lot that goes on in between the lines of sacred scripture that perhaps we'll only know when we're on the other side of life. I would imagine that Jesus said much more to that woman that day. But the evangelists or the, the oral tradition did not capture. But she was so convinced that she went into her town told the people of that town she had 
found the Messiah, the answer of prayers, the answer to all Jewish dreams, and even that of being Samaritans or the outside of that diaspora. And she she brought that experience to others. She said, I had this experience. I want to share it with you. And now I want you to come to him. And they went to him, they experienced him, and they believed. You know, when we look at our own lives, there are so many experiences that we have of Christ that we can bring to others. And I think that's the essence the new evangelization. We've talked about that for several years right now. The new evangelization. What is it? It's opening people to the word of God, to an experience of God, the reality of Jesus, and it is convincing them of that witness that we give witness to within our own lives that will bring them to that moment of faith. But I think in order to, to consider what God is asking of We've got to enter into a prayerful realm to discover the vocation that God has given to us. Now, the vocations of life are very, very simple and very plain and, uh, to be seen from uh, the moments of people falling in love, getting married, the single life, the vocations, priesthood, the religious life. There's another vocation. It's a vocation as a disciple of Jesus. How do we discover what he wants? We've got to listen to him. So every time we gather for the Mass, even though there might be a sense of routine about it, the structure is there, but every time we go to the Mass, we approach the altar of the Word to listen to God's wisdom. Then we, all, we approach the altar of sacrifice to be filled with his love and filled with you know, spending time before the Blessed Sacrament, I think, reminds us of the mystery that we are part of and how we're called to bring others into that mystery. But first and foremost, we have to have that encounter with God. 